Hey guys, welcome back. I'll be uploading more videos to this series, which is the cloud architecture series now. In the past 11 months, I've been taking a break from this series and from YouTube in general. I've not been uploading much on YouTube in the past 11 months because about 12 months back or I think 11 months back, we got into Techstars and I've been building my new company, Arma.ai, as you know. So we got into Techstars about 11 months back and then three months I was just attending Techstars and then I was traveling the US for the next two months after that. And then after that, we got into another accelerator called Outlier Ventures. So I was attending that. And in, in the middle, we also got a grant from this uh, awesome blockchain called Aptos. I was building a solution for them as well. So it's been very, very busy and very, very hectic for me. And I've recently just got some time. So I was thinking of just restarting this series. Do let me know in the comments what kind of videos you'd like to see in this series and if you're enjoying it. In case you're new to this channel, there are 17 videos already existing in this playlist, which is the Technology Architect course. And apart from this, on my channel, there's a lot of system design videos. There's a complete playlist for that. There are many Golang and Rust project videos if you want to learn Golang and Rust by building actual projects. Today, we are discussing pipe filter architecture. So from the original list, if you remember, if you go back to the original list that we are covering one by one, we had covered the microservices one in the previous video, and today we're covering the pipe filter one. And let me also make my screen full screen so this name comes from the unix technique of connecting outputs to inputs of other components by piping together so if you've used any unix based operating system you've seen piping right that's basically connecting the output of a component to the input of another component now this technique has been used now in cloud architecture and even Though you might not have heard about this technique, it's quite possible that you've been already using it or you've been exposed to systems that are already using it, okay? So this is used in the cloud for async setups, asynchronous setups and event aware systems. Now, all of this might not make any sense to you and that's completely all right. I have been using pipe filter in, in one of my projects and I didn't even know <laughs> that I was using it. So let me explain it to you and then uh, everything will make a make lot more sense. Okay? So let's say if you, if you have a data source somewhere and you pipe or, or you stream the data to another filter where you do some operations on the data then you filter it and then you operate on the data more then you filter it again to a data sync data sync being the final resting place for the data the data source uh, sorry not the database that is the data sync right so usually you would have a data source and you would have something like a data sync and you would have multiple transformations happening on the data and then you'd be filter, uh, streaming the data basically between all of these places so that's what a pipe filter architecture looks like now the filters could be just one filter, could be multiple filters, there could be multiple streams. The, the system or the architecture can get very, very complicated, right? So there could be multiple pipes sending data simultaneously to different filters, different filters sending data back, something like that, you know. So it, it, these things can get very complicated, but all we're trying to understand here is what is pipe and filter, how does it work, and the practical implications of something like this. So let me explain to you where I was using it for a client. So long back in around 2019, when I used to actively run Moltec, which is my services company, which I still run now, uh, but we had a lot more clients then, and I was fully focused on that. So there we had an IoT client, and what we did, this is something what we built for him, and I didn't even know that it's called pipe filter architecture. So he had a lot of IoT devices that were checking for some machinery um, issues in, in one of the gas plants. And then that data was coming to a database in LA. So they were based out of Los Angeles. And uh, we, were, we were streaming that data and we were transforming, transforming that data into JSON, okay? Streaming and transforming. So this is like, a, let's say, a, a, a big application where which which takes in all of this data because it's coming from so many different iot devices right managing that level of data is, is very very difficult so first you store it because even if you if you don't store it then you don't have access to the data anymore uh, if you want to get access to it later later on if it's lost it's lost so you always want to store it and then you want to stream it so this is our data source in this case okay where it's get, all the data is coming and getting aggregated then you stream it and then you run some applications like this is a big server which is running uh, uh, just one function which is transforming that data to json and then you show it on a dashboard now the reason you'd want this kind of data to be transformed to json because all of the charts the js nice charts t3js all of those they, they require data to be in json to be able to represent the data in charts and the 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 people who are running this kind of an operation they wanted to see what's happening at any all of these iot devices uh, in, at the location so they wanted these nice dashboards so that's what was happening here and then you would further on stream the data to an ml engine so it's again spark data in json now so this is the output from one filter 
going as the input to another filter which is called as piping so that's why the stream is called as the pipe and it goes into the ml engine the ml engine the main job of the ml engine is to create insights for optimization so it's uh, it's this is basically the brains of the entire operation where it's it knows that this data coming in from here these are the issues with that data or with, with those particular IoT devices this is how it can be optimized and this is how you create insights for optimization and the engineers on the location they'd use these insights to actually go and optimize and save costs then you stream the data again to an archival database if you want to in an archival database where you'd want to retrieve the data at a later date for some other operations so this is how the pipe filter architecture works at the basic level. I've shown you a nice little example of how I had used it. And I'm pretty sure you have been exposed to something like this before if you've been working uh, with, with large systems. This is how you would usually end up doing something anyways without knowing what the architecture was. It's great to know that this kind of architecture exists and this is how you do it so that you know the official way of doing something and then you can optimize based on that. So many times we are, we use concepts that we don't know but we end up at the same result but with these kind of frameworks and architectures we are able to officialize them or, or make them official that this is the hey this is the architecture you want to follow. This is like a pattern now in the industry and uh, and all of you can you have multiple engineers who can collaborate now with the same standard all right thank you so much for watching and in the next video we'll cover event streaming